Hi everybody, my name is Maurice Smith and I'm very excited to be in this class. Violence in the modern world sometimes has been very important to me over these last couple of years, and especially in modern times, I'm really excited to get involved. My name is Maurice Smith once again. I'm a senior at UNCG, University of North Carolina Greensboro. I have a major in political science and a minor in public, concentration in public affairs, as well as a major in sociology of concentration and criminology. I'll be graduating with both degrees in August and Currently, I hold a few positions. Um, um, field representative for the Progressive Turnout Project Political Action Committee, where we work to turn out more progressive votes and we work to see more progressive unity within certain communities in battleground states such as North Carolina, Arkansas, Pennsylvania, uh, Arizona, and Texas. Uh, I'm also the treasurer of the Sixth Democratic Congressional District. So everything from Winston-Salem through Guilford County, I handle the treasury reports and I just attained that position uh, in February. Um, the main thing that I am excited about is the fact that, you know, I'm a senior. That's the most exciting thing and I'm ready to graduate. Um, what I see as violence in the modern world is anything that can happen to anybody at any time in an adverse way or have an adverse effect. Like, for example, um, violence can be a hate crime on a random individual in America, but violence can also be genocide in Yemen or genocide in Rwanda or, you know, the multiple genocides we've seen in recent history. Those are very drastic differences. However, I do understand and I hope others understand that those are still acts of violence that affect people on a day to day basis that people are still afraid of to this day. It's not necessarily to say that one is more important than the other. But it is more to say that on a larger scale, one gets more attention than the other in certain communities, in certain in certain countries. Um, what I would like to see more, well, what I would like to see in this class or what we explore is how violence and poverty go hand in hand and how poverty can be a cause of violence or how violence can be a cause of poverty or how they're both in a symbiotic relationship. And by symbiotic relationship, I'm simply saying that if violence is present, poverty is also present. You know, I feel like it's not too far off to say that if we are to experience poverty in a state of nature where we're no longer protected by, you know, government resources, no longer protected by certain resources, we will eventually get into violence, which is the natural cause of events. Furthermore, violence and poverty is something that goes hand in hand in many communities that we know today that we don't necessarily think about. Um, we have people say, you know, 13% of the population, you know, which is African Americans, commit 50% of crimes in America, which based on FBI statistics is largely true. However, the sociological significance of that statement is largely inadequate, it is largely, you know, biasly false, biased and false, simply because the sociological significance behind 13% of the population commits 50% of uh, all violent crimes is uh, people that have experienced multiple affronts to their livelihood, you know, from slavery through reconstruction through civil rights era to now. It's hard to assume that violence and it's hard to assume that by any means getting what's possible was not the next step for many people, which happens frequently in many other populations. Um, furthermore, um, what do I, sorry, excuse me, what do I see as violence? How do I define violence? I'm sorry, what are examples of violence? Well, yeah, back to, um, you know, genocide and things of that nature. That's something where I come into contact frequently in many of the classes where we're discussing, you know, what's happening in the world, what's happening in life in general, how can we solve what's happening? You know, it's very difficult to solve with an international relations degree or being, you know, involved in security or homeland security. But it's these things that solving will not necessarily fix because you can't solve violence immediately. But it's these sort of things that I do feel like we should definitely pay attention to more is these examples of violence in Yemen and Rwanda and I in Iraq and Syria and um Palestine where we're simply ignoring certain acts of violence or other acts of violence 
or we're simply saying, oh, how can we get one done when there's multiple people done? You know, from Oakland to Palestine, we have to realize that all acts of violence are something that we should be ahead of.